Hey team, in this quick video, I want to review some concepts associated with IV solutions. So you've got some resources that review the compartments that we have and terms like tonicity, diffusion, and how water and the objects within water inside of ourselves generally move. But it's also to, important to think about not just how fluid moves in compartments with these designations, but what types of fluid there are and what are their impacts on cells like our red blood cells. So quickly, we're going to go through some animations that are just not well identified when you look just at a picture. And we'll identify the ways that fluid moves when presented with these types of solution. So when we're talking about tonicity, tonicity is generally just a measurement of how much of a thing is inside a water solution. And so if we're talking about something like mixing plain water with just plain sugar, right, a dextrose solution, then the sugar itself going into the water, the sugar particles are the tonicity. And so we're generally comparing these to other things. And so when we use the term isotonic, hypotonic, and hypertonic, we're describing one container and how much stuff it has inside the water compared to other containers. And in the human body, isotonic is going to reference the concentration that's equivalent to the concentration of things in, uh, dissolved in water that reside in human blood. So isotonic solutions would be solutions that have the same concentration of uh, and uh, number of particles, essentially, as that that's in blood. And this is described in one of the videos that we provided for you uh, by uh, Smart Med and describing the different types of fluids and solutions. So I'll leave that for that description. Hypotonic solutions describe a solution in which there's less stuff in the water compared to isotonic. Another way to say this is if it's hypotonic and there's less stuff in the water, then there's more water in that solution. Hypertonic, when compared to isotonic, describes a solution that has more stuff inside of it uh, and then would likely also be described as having less water inside of it when compared to isotonic. So when we're talking about the movement of water in the human body, we need to remember a few things. The movement of things between cells is generally going to involve the movement of objects between two different structures that have a membrane separating these compartments. And so generally though, water is pretty easily moved between most of the cells in our body because we have a semi-permeable membrane that allows small particles and especially particles that are not highly charged uh, to go through the membrane without need needing some particular thing or utilizing energy. Water can move from one fluid compartment to another can move between cells, between interstitial space, and between the intravascular space. And water movement between those three spaces in our body is going to basically help balance how much water we have, how much blood pressure we have, and uh, tries to meet an equilibrium uh, at any given time. However, our body is doing work, and so it's consuming water as even we rest and we sleep at night. And we're using things like electrolytes, sugar, and so on. So it's really a constantly changing state. We also want to think about what's the effect of water on a red blood cell. And that's one of the things we'll describe in this quick video. So let's remember that isotonic solution has a concentration of solute or the stuff that's in the water that's equal to that of normal body fluids. And we would consider that essentially blood or specifically the water part of blood plasma. Since the concentration of the solutes are basically equal when we're comparing these, isotonic fluids are going to have the same concentration as plasma or blood. They're not going to be pulling water or uh, solutes from one compartment to another because they have an equal concentration. And so there is no essential imbalance for diffusion to start moving things from areas of higher to lower concentration. Examples of isotonic solution include normal saline and lactated ringers solution. Now in this slide, we see isotonic solution. We've got our three spaces. We have our intracellular space, our interstitial space, and our intravascular space highlighted here. And if we think about the movement of water in this, then water is gonna move equally through all these compartments because they have about the same amount of water within them. And so nothing is drawing too much water or sending too little water through these membranes because they're trying to reach equilibrium. So isotonic solutions generally are gonna be solutions that stay within the compartment they're put into for at least some period of time. If we're looking at the concentration of things within a cell, isotonic solutions will have the same concentration of solutes on the inside of the cell than they would in the compartment nearby if it's also isotonic.
So movement of fluids will essentially be either static or can move both directions. When say one piece of sugar is consumed, uh, we may need to have an imbalance and that can easily allow for the fluid shift to occur. So isotonic solutions generally don't pull too much or too little water or solutes out of cells. So this is isotonic solutions. Hypotonic solutions mean that they have less concentration of the solute than normal body fluids. So that means they have less things within that container that has hypotonic solution in it uh, than the surrounding containers that have, say, blood within them. So th another way to say this, though, is that there's generally more water in this uh, constitution than there is the solutes compared to uh, the isotonic solution. So hypo means low tonic meaning the solutes or low things inside the water. So once we infuse hypotonic solutions, the fluid in vasculature are going to be less concentrated than those in the interstitial and or intracellular space. And so water then is going to move because we do have an imbalance between the two. So if we place hypotonic solutions into an IV or into the vein, water is going to move out of the vasculature because there's more water in the IV than there should be and less concentration of solutes. So water moves out to kind of basically remove the excess water to return, return to an isotonic state. But that water has to go somewhere, and so it'll likely go into other cells or into the interstitial fluid once it leaves the IV. Examples of hypotonic solutions include things like dextrose 5% in water or 5% dextrose in half normal saline. Now, you may uh, especially in one of the videos we provided for you, it goes into the details of what happens when this is a solution just in a bag sitting next to us, and then what happens very rapidly once we infuse this. But generally, although when we say we have solutions that have sugar in them or dextrose, those sugar molecules are very large, and that's a lot of stuff, if you will. So that usually would describe hypertonic solutions. However, there's so little dextrose in these solutions that as soon as they're infused into the body, the dextrose is going to be quickly used up, removed, and all that's really left is water. And that becomes essentially a hypotonic solution because there's no other solutes inside of it. It's water, sugar, and the sugar goes away and it's just straight water with no sodium or chloride like we would see in saline or a very small amount of sodium chloride when we have half normal saline. So uh, although maybe described in one state or you may naturally think of this as being hypertonic because it has dextrose in it, that small amount of sugar is going to be utilized immediately upon infusion. And so what's left is water with nothing else in it or a very small amount of anything in it like in our D.45, which is half normal saline, which would be a hypotonic solution. Also, just something like half normal saline or half the amount of sodium chloride in water uh, would be a hypotonic solution. These aren't yet generally utilized for maintenance or resuscitation. They're usually utilized in the pre-hospital setting to give specific medications uh, through these solutions. So again, we have our spaces, the intravascular space, the interstitial space, and the intracellular space. So let's see what happens when hypotonic solutions are infused into the IV. This uh, the green arrows are showing the water moving out of this space because you can see we only have two solutes here in the intravascular space and we have one, two, three, four, five solutes in the interstitial space and certainly more in our cells. So that means that the uh, solution, the interstitial space, if that was isotonic, then we have less things or less tonicity in the intravascular space and excess water. So the water is gonna leave out of the, inter the intravascular space and go to the interstitial space and then eventually likely make its way into the cells where excess water can cause swelling uh, or edema if it's trapped in the interstitial space. Here's another picture showing a cell that has a hypotonic solution in it, or blood vessels, that have, I'm sorry, that have a hy hypotonic solution in them compared to the interstitial and the cellular space. And so if we've only got three of our solutes, let's say those are three structures of um, an electrolyte, but surrounding in each of these spaces, we have more than three, then this becomes hypotonic and the extra space here is filled with water. So generally water will move out of the vasculature and go into the interstitial and the intercellular space uh, when a hypotonic solution is utilized. Hypertonic solutions are the opposite of hypotonic. Hypertonic solutions, hyper, so we have excess stuff in the solution, means that we have a small amount of water compared to isotonic solutions and a large amount of things or particles that are in that compared to body fluids or blood plasma.
So if we infuse hypertonic solutions into blood vessels, then we're going to have a lot more stuff and the blood can kind of be thought of as being a little bit thicker and less water. And so what ends up happening here is because water is the thing that can move very easily compared to the solutes or the particles that are uh, in these solutions, water is going to move out of the areas that have a normal water concentration and drawn into kind of to thin out the blood in the bloodstream. So an example of this could be 3% sodium chloride or 3% normal saline. And if we remember, isotonic solutions include normal saline, which is 0.9%. So less than 1% sodium chloride is our isotonic solution. So this is essentially a little more than three times that amount of salt. And so this has less water and more salt in it, and that makes it hypertonic. Other examples of hypertonic solutions include things like D50%, dextrose 50%, uh, even D10%, where the sugar may not be quickly metabolized, um, or uh, medications like mannitol within the paramedic scope of practice, which have very, very large molecules within them. And so being large particles and uh, atoms, they're generally going to take larger space. And that means there's less water and that makes it a hypertonic solution. Again, if we have our intravascular space, interstitial space, and intracellular space, notice the interstitial space in here is going to be isotonic. So we've got one, two, three, four, five particles or molecules within this space. But once we've infused a hypertonic solution, we have more than that. So here's our one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. We've got about eleven or twelve uh, compared to the five that we have. So uh, more than double the amount of stuff floating inside the vascular space. And so that has made the blood a bit thicker. So uh, just a quick knowledge check, which way do you think water is going to move if interstitial space is the, the isotonic solution and the blood vessels have a hypertonic solution in them? The blood is thicker. What will the body want to do to fix that? Excellent. Well, one of the first things that will happen is water is going to move out of the interstitial space, dehydrating the interstitial space, and going into the intravascular space. And so in doing that, the blood vessels are going to receive excess water, and that might increase blood volume and pressure, but it's at the sacrifice of the interstitial space. And once the interstitial space dehydrates, then the cells have to get involved, and they'll send water into the interstitial space. They'll become dehydrated, and that will be all in the process of trying to reach equilibrium. So although we do get water into the intravascular space and that it can increase blood volume and blood pressure in some states, it's going to dehydrate other cells and that may, in a disease state, cause more problems for our patients. So here we can see we have inside the blood vessel many more molecules or particles than we have in the interstitial space surrounding us. So again, the knowledge check is which direction will water move to remedy this situation. Well, generally, water is going to want to move into the cell to try and thin and spread out those particles and, again, hopefully reach equilibrium when we have now a lot of water and a lot of particles in the blood vessels. But it all came out of cells in interstitial space, which were dehydrated to move the water into that location. Now, let's also uh, look at this diagram in which... Oops, all right, in the next video, uh, once I switch the page, it'll start and I can't pause it. In the next part of this video, we're going to watch an animation that will show what happens when we have the three types of solution, hypertonic, isotonic, and hypotonic, when we place a red blood cell within them. And so this is something to, to also think about, is not just the movement of fluids in and out of compartments, but what does a solution do to the cells that are in the compartment we're infusing it in? And since we give IV fluids, whether it's IO or IV, it will end up in our vascular uh, when we give hypo, hyper, and isotonic solutions, they can have an impact on things like red blood cells. And so we do want to be uh, aware because damaging red blood cells, especially if we're trying to give fluid because of something like shock, is going to work against all the things that we're trying to complete and probably harm the patient a bit further. So let's see in this uh, animation what happens when we place a red blood cell in each of the types of solution. So we've got our red blood cells, hypertonic, hypo, and isotonic. First, we'll work on hypertonic. In each of these, you can see the collection of ions. If a red blood cell is placed into a hypertonic solution, water is going to be drawn out of the red blood cell, and it will dehydrate and collapse, likely killing the cell. If a red blood cell is placed into a hypotonic solution, water will rush into the red blood cell because the red blood cell has more stuff in it, and that will cause the red blood cell to engorge or lyse and burst open, also killing the cell. In isotonic solutions, the cells 
will generally remain the same because isotonic means we have the same amount of stuff inside the solution as we do in the red blood cell. So let's watch this animation again. All right, I hope this brief video helped to answer some questions, especially if you are in EMT basic and not in EMT intermediate. Uh, this knowledge might be something that's brand new to you, and we'll have to quickly gain this information both for human systems, but also for your drugs health lab, where you'll learn to give IV fluids and be concerned about what happens when you administer a fluid. This will also translate to later courses like advanced trauma, cardiology, and pharmacology in other terms of the paramedic program. If you have any questions, reach out to me or let me know through our office hours, and I'd be happy to answer them for you. All right. Talk to you soon.